Welcome back to another video, everyone. Uh, today we're doing mainstream wrestling, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Corey. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing not too bad. Just finished a live stream on Jolteon Plays. So. Yeah, but Nintendo. Uh, yeah, it's a Nintendo Direct, so they announced a bunch of games coming out and stuff like anything that. Anything good? Uh, there's some stuff that looks interesting. Uh, not anything that's like super catches your eye or anything. No Mario or Zelda or Pokemon. Uh, Mario was announced, and the game already came out, Mario Wonder. It's like uh, Super Mario Wii, but it's like different power-ups and stuff. And then Ooh. next week, Pokemon is having a Direct, and I think they're going to announce two new games, so... Yeah, if I could get the money, I think I'd get a Switch just for the Mario and Zelda games. Like uh, those are just classics. I the Switch to me is probably the best console I have right now, and um, if you get the family membership, which I could just get you to join on mine because you can connect up to eight Nintendo Switches. Like we have me, Rosanna, uh, and three four of her friends that were on the one family account and it's i think it's 125 dollars a month but altogether we pay like less than 20 bucks that's pretty cool no it's not 120 a month it's 120 a year so oh, we, wow. 20 bucks for the year so you get like a bunch of free dlc and stuff and okay. then you also get uh like a nintendo console a super nintendo console you get a game boy advanced you get some games from the n64 library and then I think one of the next big announcements, which is probably going to be later on this year or next year, we might be getting like some games from the GameCube as well. That's pretty cool. So yeah. that Mario Wonder game, it's like Mario Wii, you said? Yeah, it's it's like a further installation of Mario Wii. Like you, you had Mario Wii, you had Mario Wii U. Um, Those are fun games. Uh, yeah, this one looks cool because they're... There's a power up that you take, and the whole screen basically looks like you took a bunch of acid. <laughs> and then there's another power up where you turn into an elephant. So, so Corey wanted to start it off today with some news because it's so ridiculous that that's how we're going to start it off today. A lot of people sent me this, um, some jokingly because they're not idiots. Some legit sent me this, and they're like, can you imagine? Do you think? So, oh God, let's not spend too much time on this. There's a stupid story going around that Vince McMahon killed the Ultimate Warrior at the 2014 Hall of Fame, that he poisoned him. Um, I'm going to squash that right now. Ultimate Warrior's grandfather, heart disease, died in his 50s. Ultimate Warrior's father, heart disease, died in his 50s. Ultimate Warrior, died at 54, heart disease. It's hereditary, all right? No one poisoned the ultimate warrior. There was an autopsy made. There was nothing in his system. It was heart disease, all right? Yeah, the, I think where the rumors are coming from there, it's people want to just sh shit on Vince McMahon so much now that they're creating stories out of nowhere. It's just... It's like the Chris Benoit story that he didn't do what he did, that it's Kevin Sullivan and they found alcohol and Chris Benoit didn't drink and all that. Jesus Christ, he did it, all right? He did it. You know, Vince didn't kill Warrior. Simple as that. <laughs> the only thing I'll mention about the Chris Benoit thing that had me questioning is the fact that the coroners determined the time of deaths, but the Wikipedia page, 12 hours prior to the time yeah. of death, was changed that they were all dead. Uh, his wife was dead, and Nancy had died. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is the weirdest coincidence in human history. All right. Anybody can go change anything on Wikipedia. The fact that this guy and they, they went to see this guy, they, they investigated it. And the guy was like, I literally just saw that on a news forum or something. And I rolled with it. That's it. Yeah. It's just strange to me that it was announced like 12 hours before yeah they were actually, like i don't know it could have been benoit himself that went on wikipedia and changed it no but. no it wasn't it was a guy from from stanford they okay. actually went to the guy and the guy was like i swear to god 
I it was a coincidence, I swear. He was like some keyboard warrior from from Stanford, Connecticut. So the, the weird extremely weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so other news, uh, Shotzi Blackheart is out for nine months with a torn ACL. The injury bug continues. It's ridiculous. We talked about it, it a few it, weeks ago. It's WrestleMania season. Yeah, uh, if know, something it, can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. It's ridiculous. Uh, speedy recovery to Shotzi. This is what the third woman now that's out with a torn ACL because Charlotte yeah. and yeah. someone from NXT. Yeah, um, hmm. the name's escaping me. It, me too. Uh, other news, Gunther is now the longest reigning IC champ for single days and also the combined raise, uh, just passing Pedro Morales uh, with his defense on Monday Night Raw, actually. Yeah. If Jey Uso would have won, they would have tied the, the reign, but he is now the longest reigning IC champ. As of today, we're Wednesday, so it would be... 622 days long for me uh, I won't lie but um, you know I, I, I said it once I'll say it a thousand times him being the longest reigning intercontinental champion overshadows any world title reign he has oh it's going to be that's going to be the talk of his career. career that's what he's going to be known for he will be he's, he's going to be he's going to be known for long reigns because his NXT UK he had the title for was it over 600 days there as well? Oh, it was 800. Okay, so yeah. But he also... Like, the, yeah. part, part of that was COVID era, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'll just check real quick. So yeah, he held the NXT UK title for that long. Uh, he's held the IC title now for 622 days. Uh, if he holds it till Elimination Chamber, that'll be... In the 630s, if he holds it to WrestleMania, it'll be around 660. 870 days, the UK title. Oh, that, yeah, that's... We have to think, though, the UK title, that was COVID, and NXT yeah. UK didn't run for at least a year of that. Yeah, so... That's what he's going to be known for, is super long reigns. For these two belts, I, I I can't see them doing another Roman style title reign with a world title. Now with two belts, it's very possible. I, I'm not interested in seeing that. I'm just not. I, I think there's. I've always said this: there needs to be the right amount of time and the right amount of defenses. If you go to a year with the title, what are you doing? You, it moves a lot faster than back in the day. It does. So, so Roman not being on TV pauses everything, so that's fine. But if you're on TV every week, if Seth Rollins keeps the belt for another year and a half, I'm changing the channel right there. I'm not interested yeah, I, in that at all. I think Seth loses it. At maybe Elimination Chamber, maybe WrestleMania. I don't He's think he has a match at WrestleMania. I don't think he has a match at Elimination Chamber. They have an interview segment. Okay. So what I think happens is, I, I'm not even sure if Seth defends his belt at Mania. I think night one main event is a tag team match. I think Cody and Seth versus Rock and Roman. Yeah, I could see that. I would hate that. Yeah. But, whatever. I'm not good. We're not there yet. Not there we can yet. just speculate. Um, World Extreme Wrestling is shutting down. That is Afa is promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like what eighty six years old or something like that. So Afa's not a young young guy. Yeah, uh, he is. Um, he he trained Batista. I'm trying to think who's his kids now. I don't remember. Um, Sika, his old tag team partner, that's Roman's father and Rosie's father. And... Yeah. Uh, CMLL and AAA can now both work with AEW, but they're not allowed to work programs together. Yeah. Uh, Which, that's, hey, that's a step forward. It is. Um, you don't realize, I heard this great quote this one time, where they said, 
pro wrestling. In Japan, it's a sport. In Mexico, it's tradition. In Canada, it's family. In the United States, it's a joke. Um, but tradition for Mexico. It's one of those things where it is tradition. And it's like a it's like a rival hockey team or a rival football team. You know, you're a Sens fan, I'm a Habs fan. You bleed that color, that that color, that team, everything. Um, it's the same thing with wrestling promotions. You grew up watching CMLL, you're not going to be a fan of AAA. But if you grew up AAA and you were a La Parca fan and a Rey Mysterio fan, that's your team. Yeah. So, you know, it, I like the competition. Uh, it muddies the water for some things, though. They've worked once together, once, on a show, and nobody could decide on any finishes. So it ended up just being nothing. Yeah, that, uh, uh, for American fans, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, it's uh, basically just imagine Survivor Series where it's Raw versus SmackDown, and when you're booking, you want your brand to win the most. Yeah, except you're not all on the same company. Yeah, yeah, it's two different companies that borderline hate each other. No, the hatred is real. The hatred is very real. Uh, next up, uh, a lot of the TNA talent have sent a letter to uh, Anthem. Anthem. That's what I thought it was. I just wasn't sure. Uh, wanting a meeting to talk with them and uh, to go on that. They, Josh Alexander, uh, Tommy Dreamer, Jordan Grace, amongst a few others, which is their top talent, Moose is one of them, all posted an hourglass on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So is this meaning that the time's ticking away on that response for the letter? Is it meaning that they're the time's ticking on the end of their contracts? Well, that that's in... Uh... That's all because of the Scott Demore thing. Yes. Um, I don't know. This I feel like next week. By next week, this is going to be a huge story because either Demore is back or he's not, and there's something ain't right in Texas. You know. Um, something ain't right in Ontario. In Ontario, there you go. <laughs> uh, going on that, there's the TNA uh, Josh Alexander contract. Yep. Yeah, you so, wanted to bring that up. To... So TNA has exercised their option to extend Josh Alexander's contract. So in his deal, TNA had the option to extend him, whether he wants to or not. So they have extended him. So he technically is re-signed. Um, I see a mess here. I see a big mess. It's uh, definitely something that I think could have handled a lot better. Obviously, we don't know the the situation why Demore was fired. Um, it could go a lot deeper for things we don't know. But uh, I, I believe with how, many, how much talent is sticking up for Demore, I don't think Demore did something like v Vince the, McMahon worthy. The story I heard was... Demore knew he was done. He knew he was getting fired, and a few other guys were getting fired. So, and you mentioned this last week, he found a huge bank in Canada to loan him the money, and he was like, I want to buy TNA. And they said no. So when Demore did that impassioned promo, we are TNA, we are back, blah, 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 he knew he was done. He knew he was done. So Demore did nothing. They were firing him no matter what. Once the rebrand happens, you're around for a little bit and you're gone. So, you know, imagine being at a job and you've made them relevant again. And your thank you is, go away. You're, you're no longer part of us. You're, you're banned. It's crazy. It's really no, it's, crazy what's happened here. It's definitely a fucked up situation. With how much he's helped bring TNA back to relevancy. Uh, like you said last week, Tony Khan hiring him to rebuild Ring of Honor right now would be the perfect thing for Khan. Yeah. 
Um, you know, it, it's one of those things. He was well liked, clearly. Uh, TNA wrestlers sent a letter. They they want them to reconsider. Who knows what's going to happen? It's it's an ongoing story. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, it's something we're going to have to wait week by week and get a little bit more information. And Yeah. Uh, next thing I have here is QT Marshall returns to AEW, but only behind the scenes. He's a good trainer. He's a good... He's one of those classic wrestlers where he never really made it big. He was a name... But he wasn't really like, like, he wasn't even mid card champion level. You know, he was a name, but maybe his value is elsewhere. I think QT's biggest draw is that he runs the Nightmare Factory with Rhodes, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. think that's possibly why they brought him back to get access to the factory and possibly the name, the Nightmare Factory too. I, I don't think Cody's there anymore, right? I can't see him not being owner or part owner. Because I believe... Uh, who was I talking with? I don't remember who it was, but... They were saying that Cody's still trained. He's not there often, like, but he's still training guys. Okay. It's possible. It's very possible. And then uh, the last news that I have on my side here is Destiny Wrestling in Ontario is making a 16 women two bracket tournament to crown a new and only Destiny Women's Champion. I just showed you the belt right before we started recording. Um, Nice looking belt. You know, Destiny, uh, that's where New Hook and Connors went. They were tag team champions. Um that company has great looking belts. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit of maritime talent. The rest of their Troy mm-hmm. Merrick wrestled there. Troy, uh, uh, Burke wrestled there for a match or two. Yeah. Uh, sabotage. Uh, I, I don't know if Emily ref there. Could I'm be. not sure. I think she did. I think she, I think she went with new hook and, uh Connors and Troy that one time. I believe, yeah. Um is Destiny creating this woman's title a counterpart to um what's her name that just created the all woman's brand in Quebec? Oh, I have no clue. I haven't, I haven't followed the story at all. Chantel just wrestled there, Mia Malik just wrestled there. Not Daniel Leo. Dan, you, no, no, it's like a bigger name that, um, oh, come on. This is in Quebec, you said? Yes. I haven't seen this at all. Women's Wrestling Syndicate. Oh, the offshoot of... Uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. International Wrestling Syndicate. It's yeah. run by... Um... I'm trying to think of her name right now. It wasn't... Um... It's not Lufisto, right? Luf- that's it. Lufisto, I think, is who is running then started that okay i might have seen that and it kind of rings a bell we we search up a lot of wrestling uh week to week uh, yeah more than... Ch- chantal wrestled there mia wrestled there danny wrestled there uh divia wrestled there their last show too i believe but it's an all women's wrestling promotion in quebec okay that's pretty cool I, i'd go i'd be down to go see that um last week was a bad week for dave meltzer yeah, that was. Uh, I'm glad that someone in WWE is now releasing false information out there yeah. to prove exactly how much of an asshole and mark that Dave Meltzer is. He said 
And everything he said was like made no sense. He said the plan was always Rock and Roman. And they were like, well, why did Cody win the Royal Rumble? That makes no sense. Cody wins the Rumble, points at Roman. They change their plans. It goes south. They change their plans again. Now they're going in the right direction. He said, no, 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 no. The plan is still Cody. It's still Roman and Rock. He put his foot down. That's still the plan. Which it's clearly not. But he's like, nope, the plan is still a ro Rock and Roman. So he's just making himself look like an absolute douchebag. Um, if you are listening to this and you have to listen to Dave Meltzer's opinion, or even our opinion, make your own opinion. Yeah. If I say, hey, Ultimate Warrior is the greatest ever, and you say no, that's your opinion. There you go, you can right? Have your own opinion, yeah. Exactly. Um, I feel like that—that's uh, the mark of maybe like not all wrestling fans, but there's a good portion of wrestling fans that can't form an opinion for themselves. They have to be told what's good. You know. Yeah, it's Melser's five-star rating scale, where six stars, seven stars can happen. It's, it's stupid. It, it's imagine. his opinion, though. He's allowed to do it. He he's he's made six figures, all right, every year with doing the Wrestling Observer. So you know, kudos to him for doing that. But if that's the gospel to you, then you, you're you're not a very independent person. No, form your own opinions about wrestling. Yeah. You don't need to wait uh, two or three days when Melser releases his star ratings on a match to see if it's a good match or not. If you like the match, that's all that matters. I remember this one guy that I would talk with online, and I would always ask him, what, what's your favorite match? Well, Melzer said this and this and that and this. And I asked him, oh, you actually see these matches? Like, no, I've never seen those matches. <laughs> Well, why the fuck do you say that they're so good? What matches have you seen? Well, whatever's on Raw. You know, we had Troy Merrick a few weeks ago. Troy is a wrestling fan, all right? Not only is he one of the best wrestlers, he's a wrestling fan. When you're tape trading and all that in the late 90s, early 2000s, like I did, and I'm sure like you did, uh, we tape traded between all each other. One would record a pay-per-view. One would record another pay-per-view. And we'd, oh, yeah. just, we'd always be searching. We'd find people at school that we didn't know were wrestling fans. Hey, did you record it? Can we have it? You know? You know, it's one of those things. I can tell you Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan's a five-star match. Joel can say it's a zero star. It's his opinion. You know what's funny? Oh. I'll admit it right now. Never watched the match. Oh, dude, it's one of the best. It's one of the best for nostalgia, but y y I don't know. It's one of those matches I feel you'd be like, meh, because you didn't grow up with it, you know, and it's not, not your fault that you wouldn't be a fan of it. It's just it's just not something that you've never – you didn't grow up with it. I was a year old when I saw that match, and it changed my life. Like, I remember watching that match at a year old. What the hell are you supposed to remember at a year old? And I remember this, so – uh, do you have any more news? Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, we're going from funny to dark. Former WWF wrestler Paul Roma claims he knows about an incident worse than the Janelle Grant alleged about Vince McMahon. Um, we're still waiting to find out what that is, but uh, Paul Roma apparently will be releasing something. I don't know if it's going to be on the news. I don't know if it's going to be online. He, uh, yeah. The worst is yet to come, I think. Uh, and Yeah, the worst is yet to come. And I think um, there's also going to be a lot more people involved uh, than we originally thought. Like, for example, it also just came out from someone... Ashley Massaro's friend. Yeah. That Stephanie McMahon knew about everything. Uh, it was announced like a week ago that Stephanie was 
uh, consoling Ashley and all this, but it was announced by Ashley's friend or whatever that that's not true. And uh, Stephanie knew about all this and just tried to hide it too. So I think if it keeps going and more stories like this come out, I think the McMahons will be fully gone from WWE. And I, I think that would include Triple H at some point too. That's a shame. Triple H is doing a good job. He is. Um, I got one more piece of news. This is more for Maritime fans. Um, Yusuke Kodama wins the Tenryu Project International Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships with Naoki Tanizaki. Who is Yusuke Kodama? Yusuke Kodama wrestled as the Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling Spider-Man in 2013. So Joel didn't know about this, but he is tearing it up. He's in the company Great in Japan. He's been in all Japan. He's wrestling for Tenryu Projects. So he's lighting it up. So Kodama, is that... Because I remember a Japanese wrestler, and obviously when Japanese wrestlers come here, they always change their names. The only one that I think they didn't was Sonata. Sonata um, and um, uh, Nakawe Fumino yes, or something Fumi like that. Yes, Nakawe. Yes, Nakawe or something like that. Okay, uh, that's, he, that he's... was my question was going to be, if that was no, him. Not, not the same guy. Okay. So yeah, let's get into the shows. All right, NXT. We started off. Uh, it starts off with Noam Dar and Ora Mensa defeating Vaughn Wagner and Mr. Stone. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have your Heritage Cup champion lose in just a regular match. No. Um, yeah. Uh, next Sorry up, about Ridge. that. Ridge Holland uh, defeats Gallus by DQ in a gauntlet match. Yeah. Um, so you said Ridge Holland's one? Yep. That, that's interesting because uh, I, I kind of see him having one foot out the door almost being fired. I don't see what is left for Ridge Holland's. I don't, I don't see the appeal in him at all, if I'm being no. honest. Uh, Lola Vice defeated Tatum Paxley. A uh, match on the match. card, yeah. Uh, Jada Parker defeated Adriana Rizzo. Match on the card, really. <laughs> uh, Carmelo Hayes defeated Joe Gacy. <sighs> I wish they'd give a chance to Joe Gacy. I really do. I, 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 to me, Joe Gacy reminds me so much of Bray Wyatt, where he got held back so long, and they didn't want to fully push his character. Bray, you know, I argued, not argued, but had a debate with a friend of mine about Bray Wyatt. And I've always been of the opinion that Bray Wyatt, there was something missing with his career. His, his career is incomplete. And my friend said basically he's a three-time world champion. One of the most popular acts ever. Opinions again, um, but at least he's got three world titles. He was on the main roster. Died super young. He died. He was only thirty six. Gacy's not even getting a chance. Yeah, he had yeah. schism. I don't know. It's I always enjoyed Joe Gacy's work, even as the you know the music. The when he had Harlem with him, it was great. Um, I don't know. It just it 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 kind of, it mostly reminds me of uh, remember Mordecai mid two thousand. I love character. the Mordecai character. I loved it too, but people hated it. It just didn't get over. It just did not get over. And just it is what it is. I guess uh, what I think is good doesn't necessarily mean other people will think it's good. Clearly, I'm an Ultimate Warrior fan. You know. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people were fans, but a lot of people weren't fans, and those people were the WWE. Uh, well, WWE said this, so it has to be true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, Kiana James defeated Brinley Reese. As she should. Just I another... like Kiana James. Yeah, and then the main event, we get new NXT Tag Team Champions in Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Um, a little shocked by that one. Uh, I did see this match. 
Breaker just signed with SmackDown. Yep. What's the point in all? It seems like you finally make it to the main roster and they put a belt on you in NXT. Solo Sokoa made his debut, wins the North American belt. Um, you know, just, I don't know. It's always like that. Yeah, Solo, he won the belt and he did he vacate it? He vacated it happened? a week or two later. Yeah, that's... Uh, so that's it for NXT. Scratching it off my list. And next up we go into Dynamite, where Dax Hardwood lost to John Moxley in the opening match. Yeah, that Hardwood, you know. <laughs> uh, something I've noticed a lot about uh, John Moxley matches uh, is he really likes kissing his opponents. Renee Young or Renee Paquette, you know, you better uh, jump on that. Well, I, I'd say in the past year alone, he's probably kissed seven men in his matches. That's yeah, with the times. Yeah. Uh, Wardlow defeated uh, Barrett Brown, which was a 30-second match, if that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what you do with Wardlow. I don't know what you do with the Undisputed Kingdom. Like, the Devil storyline was one week. That's it. The Devil's... It, it's done. It's all done. It's fizzled out. Yep. I just... there. There's a problem with having the two main characters in that storyline being injured. So... That's why, to me, I wouldn't have announced Adam Cole as the Devil. Yeah. It's the one that made the most sense, I know. Storyline-wise, it was all there, but... He's injured. MJF is injured. This storyline has disappeared. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just don't get this one at all. Uh, it fizzled, like you said, it fizzled out, fizzled out, and any news on MJF when he's coming back? Because he was banged up. He was really banged up. No idea. I'm guessing probably their next pay per view, if it wasn't too serious. Yeah, uh, AEW Revolution, I think, is the next pay-per-view. I think so. Um, next match, Adam Copeland defeats Daniel Garcia. As he should. Um, I don't know how many matches Copeland has left in the tank. He's doing okay. He's, he's a nostalgia act. Yeah. You know? Um, to me... Obviously, Adam's going to get another match against Christian because they keep attacking and bashing each other. Um, but to me, Adam's been the big disappointment for AEW. Uh, he's getting a match against a young guy, then getting a match with Christian and losing. Getting a match with a young guy, yeah. getting a match with Christian and losing. So, the trade-off was Adam Copeland for CM Punk. Neither company really won. Except for when CM Punk made his debut, I think WWE got... Like 90 million views in 24 hours. Yeah. I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair, but at the same time, what are you judging it on? Punk got hurt again. You know, I'm sure CM Punk would be on his way to face Seth Rollins or on his way to the Elimination Chamber to win that and then face Seth Rollins. He got injured. Uh, Edge didn't get injured. So it's like... I, b I believe the original plan was Punk winning the Rumble and challenging Seth. No. So if apparently no. the plans happened the way it was, I would have had Punk win the Rumble and have Cody chase. Ah, I got to finish the story. You know, Shawn Michaels wanting another shot at The Undertaker in yes. 2006. Perfect storyline, right? But no, the storyline was always Cody's going to win the Rumble and Punk's going to go to um, Elimination Chamber, win that. Why give the older guy all the obstacles, you know? Switch the storylines. But mm -hmm. hindsight being twenty twenty, thank God Cody won the Rumble. Well, I I think they would have called an audible anyways if Punk got injured during the match and yeah. switched the winner. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, next up, the Young Bucks defeated Top Flight. Matthew Corey's favorite tag Nicholas team. Nicholas Jackson. I just don't like him. I'm sure it was a decent match uh willow nightingale defeated sky blue 
Mm, don't know if I like that. And then Orange Cassidy defeated Matt Taven in a Texas death match for some ass reason. I saw this match. What a bloody match. To me, um, we get a Texas death match or something along the lines of that at least once a month in AEW. I think it's losing its shock factor. Yeah, uh, less is more. Uh, so Rampage. We start off with Sammy Guevara versus Jeff Hardy. Is this the match where Jeff got injured? The botched shooting star press. Yeah. Sammy Guevara went for a shooting star press and uh, nailed Jeff right in the face with his knee. Knocked him out. It was an accident. And... A lot of people attacked Sammy Guevara oh. as a dirty wrestler and uh, purposely injured. No, no, it was an accident. You're in midair twisting in the wind. Uh, where you land, you know, it happened to Billy Kidman and Chavo Guerrero in 2005, I think it was, where Chavo got Kidman's thigh right on the side of his head and knocked him the fuck out. It happens yeah. in wrestling. It's not ballet. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's an accident. Um, I don't know if I would have continued and went as hardcore in the match after this happened. I'm just going to say this. Jeff should retire. He's yes. done. He's done. The Jeff Hardy of 10, 15 years ago ain't there anymore. He's no. beat up, his body's broken, and he's still trying to do all these friggin' sh stunts, basically. And it's just... It, it, it's sad to see, because Jeff Hardy is probably one of the most popular wrestlers ever. Jeff was my favorite in school. Like, from, you know whenever I started watching wrestling and seeing him until 7th or 8th grade? Probably from 99 to like 2001, Jeff was my favorite. And I was a huge Hardy Boys fan. And the reason he was my favorite is I always loved to, at the gym, at the gym in a school gymnasium, they would put these like blue mats, these like thick blue mats, and we could jump off the... My God, this stuff was dangerous back then. We jump off these, and I would always do a front flip, and it would give me a head rush, and I always enjoyed that. And when Jeff Hardy started doing the Swanton Bomb, I was like, "Geez, he's doing the same move I am." So I'd try to emulate, like I'd just do a front flip, but then all of a sudden I'd try to like be stiff as you a board. Spread out, yeah. You spread so, out and then just rotate at the very last second. Yeah. So back then I was a lot smaller than I was now, and I, I started doing that like picture perfect. Then I gained a lot of weight and just not athletic anymore. But that's one of the reasons Jeff became my favorite is because of his finishing move, the Swanton Bomb. Everybody was doing a moonsault and all that. And doing a front flip is a lot easier than doing a back flip. And I thought that was like, to me, it's always separate yourself from the pack. Be different. And Jeff did that move. And I always thought that was so cool. Yeah, Jeff was my favorite. And I remember in school, we were playing wrestling all the time. And Matt, Matt Dagg. Yeah, uh, I was Jeff. He was Matt, and uh, Amanda was going out with Matt at the time, so she was the leader. <laughs> so yeah, it always worked out. Um, next match: Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erichs defeat three jobbers. I didn't even catch their names. The Von Erich dynasty lives on. I haven't even seen the movie yet. I haven't either, and I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not seeing it yet. We we've had we haven't had the time, really. We've been busy. Yeah, I've been like re doing some renovations in the house, putting out so much content on YouTube. Now I'm uh, moderating the live stream chats for the B H Hotel. I'm doing a fantastic job. There's a few times I don't know what I would have done if you weren't there because I lose my patience so easy. And there's this one guy that kept saying like, "Stop unmuting, stop." Stop muting, stop muting. And if you keep copyrighted music, it's not good. You know, no, especially, it's not. Especially ACDC. Some, if you're monetized, some will well, just the, get that money. The BSHL channel now earns money. Probably, I'm not. Because they're the point that they have enough watch time hours that people can subscribe and yeah. become members and they okay. can also leave like donations. Okay. 
Um, but this one guy kept saying, like, stop muting, stop muting. And Joel kept telling him, listen, we can't have music, especially ACDC. ACDC are not allowed to have mu their music at all, at all. No, the video no, is banned immediately. Yeah. And I kept seeing that, kept seeing that stuff. Unmute, unmute, unmute. And I'm like, this has to be one of my friends trying to rim me or something. And I just unmute. I'm like, no, we're not going to fucking unmute. Stop asking. Me. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I, I really lost my patience with this guy. And he came back with KK Frenchie. And Joel immediately was like, boom, time out. You're gone. <laughs> yeah, looked, like, when he replied with KK Frenchie, I'm like, fuck off, dude. Like, My immediate reaction, I looked at Corey, and I'm like, thank fucking God Joel's there. Because I would have just had a fucking argument with this guy on the stream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, um, what makes it easier? I just got a piece of equipment in last week that it's a button machine, basically. It's a fancy button machine and I can pre-program messages. That's why you'll see like, uh. it'll fully type. I can type out 25 different messages in the chat and it's all just me pressing a button and it types it out automatically. That's pretty freaking cool because like within seconds of a goal it's like boom this guy scored boom this guy scored and all three goals are there and it's like really cool stuff really cool stuff uh we got a little off track there <laughs> eh, uh, enjoy us uh next up queen aminata defeated anna j which is her first win in AEW, and she is now she got her graphic of being all elite all right yeah it's whatever it's no no not anything different to me it's no sussy love <laughs> uh next up the bang bang scissor gang defeated jay lethal jeff jarrett sagnum singh evil uno john silver and alex reynolds they sure did so it was a 12-man tag match yeah you know that's still not the most i've seen in a match no no i think Survivor Didn't Series. Randy Orton and John Cena face off against like 20 people? Yeah. The one I'm talking about is Survivor Series 88. They had the tag team, tag team Survivor Series match. Yeah. So it was like five team on each side. So 20 wrestlers in one match and everybody was like surrounding the ring until guys got eliminated. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we're going into Collision, where John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli defeated Star Junior and Esfinge. E S F I N G E. Esfinge. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was yeah bad. that was just they just continue that little feud storyline they have going on there. Uh, Daniel Garcia defeated Shane Taylor. As he should. Uh, Brian Cage uh, defeated the Outrunners again. I think this happened last week. I think even twice last week. So the Outrunners are OVW guys. Um, sort of a comedy character. Um, I don't know what their point is here, really. Just um, job guys, I guess. Well, if they've been squashed, you know, three times now in the past two weeks, that's what they're there for. Yeah. Uh, next up, Brody King uh, defeated Mark Briscoe, which to me makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diana Perrazzo defeated Kiera Hogan. As she should. She's going for the belt. Yeah. Uh, Tony Storm defeated the girl that just got her first win on Rampage in Queen Aminata. So uh, make her lose again straight after. To the champ, though. There's no shame in that. <laughs> no, no. And then the main event, Orange Cassidy defeated Tomohiro Ishii. I bet that was a good match. It probably was. I didn't watch it. I haven't watched it. There's a lot of wrestling in one week. There is a lot of wrestling. Like, I don't have any notes on Ring of Honor, but I've said before that I'm done with Ring of Honor notes because <laughs> fucking 16 matches. It's insane. <sighs> Two and a half pages long. Uh, next up, TNA. Frankie Kazarian defeated Jake something. That's his what name. A name. Jake something. Yeah. Yeah. Just... It's a name. Yeah, it's not. It's not me not knowing his last name. That's his last name. Is Jake yep. something? Yep. Jordan Grace defeated Savannah Evans. Yeah, Roy Magoo. 
we get a vignette that Ash by Elegance, so the former Dana Brooke, is getting her in-ring debut next week. Let's see what she learned in WWE. Uh, ABC defeated the Grizzled Young Vets in their second match, so they're they're now tied one match to one match. Yeah, um, I'm hoping for a Grizzled Young Vets uh, win here at the end. So, I believe I could be wrong on this, but I believe TNA has a pay per view this weekend. It, it's very possible. So I think their third match would happen at the pay per view. Is it TNA or is it? AEW. They both could have a pay per view this weekend. I'm not sure. It's possible. Uh, Crazy Steve defends his uh, media championship against Rhino. Rhino is still there, huh? Yeah. I was watching I was an old. I was watching this old. Uh, the very last ECW show ever, like the original ECW show, is on YouTube. It's like fan cam. And I was watching that, and I saw Rhino come out with the ECW world title. And I thought, man, this guy had the world by the balls. He was the ECW world champion. Goes to WWE, never gets higher than hardcore, mid-card status. TNA goes there, wins the world title for two days. Never really much more than hired muscle in other places. Yeah. You know, this guy was great in ECW. And it just never really translated to main eventer. The thing about ACD, uh, ACDC, ECW, I don't know why that came up, but um, you didn't need to be a great talker for ECW. No. Everywhere else you go, you need to be a great talker. Yeah. Uh, yes. Paul Heyman was the best at hiding the negative and accentuating the positive. So. Yeah. Uh, next match, uh, we're supposed to get Cody Diener versus Joe Hendry, and the match never happens. Joe Hendry has to be one of the most entertaining guys I've ever seen. He is uh, very entertaining, yes. Don't say his name, and then all of a sudden he just pops his head up. <laughs> the best thing ever. Uh, next up, Danny Luna defeats Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly was in Ring of Honor years ago. And I believe she yep. was the first champion. And I could be wrong. I believe she was or is married to BJ Whitmer. It's possible. So it's good to see her still working. And next up, we get um, an announcement for a match uh, happening at the pay-per-view. That's why I think that's why I think the pay-per-view is this weekend or the next okay. weekend or whatever. Uh, Josh Alexander versus Simon Gotch. Oh, that should be good. That should be should really be a good. good match. Because I believe the story here is Simon Gotch was Josh Alexander's first TNA match. It's it's possible. And Simon Gotch is upset that Josh Alexander got you know so big and so looking yeah. forward to that. And yeah. then in the main event, Moose defeated Kushida. Was this a title match? It didn't say, so I don't think it was. I think um, the only title match we had was the media championship. Okay, so the world champion goes over as he should, you know. Yeah. Uh, so next up, <sighs> we're going into SmackDown. Um, Kevin Owens defeats Dominic for a qualifier for the Elimination Chamber, which I think makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Stratton defeats Zelina Vega in the qualifier for the Women's uh, Elimination Chamber. Yeah. The Authors of Pain defeat Javier Bernat and B. Morris. So two jobbers. Sussy love. <laughs> uh, Logan Paul defeats The Miz in a qualifier. As he should. Yeah. Uh, Naomi defeats Alba Fire in a qualifier. As she should. I like Alba Fire, though. She, her and uh, Isla Dawn are great. I don't think they're ever going to do anything with them, though. No. Uh, Braun Breaker signs with SmackDown is what yeah. happens next. Uh, I like that. Uh, it's about time he moves up. So I'm assuming with this that Braun Breaker is not challenging for the IC title. 
unless they switch the IC title to SmackDown and the US title to Raw. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I really, I don't know what's going on with the Intercontinental title right now. Um, I, it's kind of looking like Jey Uso might be the one taking it at Elimination Chamber. Uh, that's what I would do, and then you have your, your big money feud with Jimmy and Jay at WrestleMania. Which I don't think needs the belt. Then again, John Cena and Batista at WrestleMania 26, I believe it was, didn't need the belt, but they still had it. Yep. And then we get a Bloodline promo to end off SmackDown. And which everybody was... freaked out about this one. It's very interesting because The Rock made it seem like he was talking to Cody Rhodes, but literally points at Roman and says, you're a loser and you're going to lose at Mania. And then after the promo was done and they put up their finger in the air, The Rock held up an L instead. Really? Double yeah, L. Depending on what what camera you're seeing. So, um, a seed's planted. Triple H is known for that. So I, I think it's there for a reason. Um, wouldn't even be shocked if Roman lost the title thanks to The Rock. I wouldn't be surprised, but I think if The Rock cost Roman the title, that just discredits Cody Rhodes even more. It does. I agree with you there. Um, maybe, like, there's always a way The Rock comes out and Cody's about to hit the crossroads. Here comes Solo and Jimmy, and The Rock goes, No. Let it play out. Crossroads, crossroads, one, two, three. Where was the bloodline? Where's my family? They're out to pee. <laughs> so next up, actually, I might as well announce this. Uh, the Elimination Chamber matches are set. The men's one is going to be Drew McIntyre, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, Randy Orton, and Logan Paul. Yeah. And the women's one is Liv Morgan, Becky, Raquel, Tiffany Stratton, Bianca, and Naomi. I got so, Drew and Becky. I got Drew and Becky as well. Because I think that's the matches that make the most sense. <laughs> Agreed. And I believe if... They're both taking the titles at Mania. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I so, think it's time for Seth to drop the belt. Just something fresh. Drew having that belt as a heel uh, works. You're, if you're going to have a babyface champion in Cody, might as well have a heel champion in Drew. Yeah, and Drew's putting in great work as a heel. Uh, they announced him as DM Hunk, I think, on one of the Monday Night Raws. Uh, so it's, it's great work by Drew and the announcers. and Yeah. Um, you know, it keeps Punk relevant. You know, Punk was there at Raw. Oh, yeah, he uh, did a little promo after Raw went off the air. Yeah, so I'm happy that he's still around because most people get injured and they go away and you don't see them and they're doing rehab and all that. It shows punk cares. Yeah. Uh, so getting into Monday Night Raw, first match, Drew McIntyre defeated Cody Rhodes. That's Cody's first loss since WrestleMania. Really? Yeah, I guess. Because he's fought Nakamura a bunch. A thousand times. He's won all the matches. And before that, every match he had, he was the victor. They kept yeah. him very strong. They protected Cody Rhodes, which is why I'm shocked that the fans haven't turned on him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought all the announcer, the, all of the people were announced, but Raquel Rodriguez here wins the Battle Royal to qualify. Yeah. So I went a little premature by announcing the all the participants. Here's a question I have. Where the hell is Braun Strowman? Uh, He's still I with the company. 
Yeah, I just seen uh, someone posted a picture of him on Facebook, and he's lost a bunch of weight, and he's like super jacked now. So, I don't know, maybe they're waiting for something. He hasn't wrestled a match since May. That's almost a year now, yeah, wow. Maybe there's just no room for him anywhere, which is true. Yeah. Uh, the Judgment Day defeats The Miz and R-Truth in a tag match. As they should. Love R-Truth, but The Miz is cancer on my TV. Well, you're not going to like this because I'm making a prediction now. The Miz and R-Truth is tag team champions at WrestleMania. Boo. Boo. Yay, Miz. Yay, yeah, truth. Boo, Miz. Uh, next match, Chad Gable defeats Ivar. That's what happens when you don't have much to do with either guy, right? Yeah. And then the main event, Gunther <laughs> defeats Jay Uso by Jimmy Uso kind of interfering in the match. Yeah. Um, plant seeds. Um, Got to wait and see how this goes. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, the Usos always wanted a match together facing off against each other at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, Give them what they want. They've put in great work with the company. They need to go full Batista. Give me what I want. Give me what <laughs> I want. And then quit not too long after. Yep. So that that That's the American way of doing it. So yeah, that's all I have for notes and stuff for wrestling this week. Yeah, same here. Um, I, surprisingly, we're under an hour. Yep. And we even rented. Yeah, we did. Uh, March is approaching us. Uh, the new season of Dark Side of the Ring is coming out. I uh, can't wait for that. Yeah, uh, look forward on this channel. I think I designated, uh, I designated a day for us to do the reviews. Uh, look at my notes here. Um, Dark Side of the Ring is going to be on Tuesday. So Dark Side of the Ring reviews will be airing on Tuesdays? Yep. All right. So we will be doing season one first, then season three, then four, then two, and then we'll finish with five. Sure. Now we're going in order. Um, <coughs> yeah, I actually, I, I was uh, just creating like a um, list yesterday of like, what I want to come out on both channels, what days, because with taking wrestling off Jolteon plays and putting wrestling on its own channel, I do want at least five videos on each channel going out. So I had to figure out a schedule. So on this channel, Maritime Wrestling is going to always be Sundays. Mainstream Wrestling is going to take over Wednesdays. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring episodes are going to be Tuesdays. Uh, Saturdays are saved for our interviews. And then I have the three other days I have ideas for them, but not fully committed to them yet. So Okay. So stay tuned. But yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Take care.